Hello everyone, this is episode 14 of the Owl and the Oak Tree Knitting Podcast. Today is June 6, 2017. Did I say June? If I did, I'm sorry, it's July. July 6, 2017. I don't even remember what I said. Okay, um, my name is Michelle and you can find me uh, pretty much everywhere as Michelle Owls, but I am mostly on Ravelry and Instagram. And I wanted to record today. I think it's already been two weeks anyway, but we are going up to Lake Erie on Saturday and spending the week up there. So I figured I didn't want to, well, I didn't want to wait a whole other week to record. Um, how you guys been? can't believe we are past July 4th. Everybody keeps telling me that now that that's past, that summer is going to go by more quickly, which I feel like it's already moved really quickly. Soon we'll be already going back to school, and I'm kind of bummed about that. Anyway, uh, I'm not bummed about the temperature getting cooler, though. I'll be really happy about that. Um, I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. I've made show notes today to remind me of things to talk about because I always forget to share what I'm wearing. Um, this is the Morning Mist top by, I don't know if she goes by Andy Claire or Andy Rowden, but I will um, have it in my show notes, which my, the show notes for all my episodes can be found in our Ravelry group called the Owl and the Oak Tree Knitting Podcast over on Ravelry. And I, it's a DK weight top, the pattern is, but I knit this one in sport weight. This is my third morning mist that I've made. And this um, variegated yarn is by O Loops in the Eddie Cohen colorway. And then the blue here is um, the Cascade Longwood sport weight in the faded denim colorway. And instead of the um, lace pattern, that is in the pattern. Uh, I, I did a different lace panel. I did uh, the regatta tee lace panel in the back. Just to change things up since, you know, this is my third. <laughs> but I really love the construction of this top. Um, you do the lace panel first and then you go do the rest of the body, which is just a nice, it makes a great top. And um, the third or the second one I made for my sister. So I really just have two for myself. Let's see. Okay, I have a couple finished objects. Um, kind of finished knitting wise. I finished that um, what I have called the mountain union suit because I've been trying to kind of name everything for my sister and, and the baby kind of twin pixie themed. Um, is this little union suit, which the pattern name is B20-23 Little Blue Dream. And I knit, I don't know if it's like zero to three months or a newborn size, but whatever the smallest size is. And I, um, the yarn I used was the Kismet Fiberworks and Abundance Base, which is was um, their cashmere base. They are no longer dyeing yarn. Um, I think this is the mink or wink colorway. And I had some issues with this pattern. Um, like, I don't know. I think they wanted me, one, to knit this hood really far out or the ribbing really far out and attach it. But then they wanted me to attach it to this part. But then if you closed it, I don't know. I just, I'm going to leave it open. I'm just going to leave it open. I don't know if Lynette wants to put like a ribbon on, in there or something to sew. I, I don't know. I think it'll be fine. Um, but this is like a really big hood <laughs> on this little bitty body. And I really had issues with the seaming here. And look at these little bitty legs. I don't know. Will it fit? I don't know. If not, oh well. Um, I just need to put the buttons here, which I just purchased some buttons at Joanne's. It's these little brown buttons. So hopefully I'll stop procrastinating and put the buttons on here. 
and I still want to try to embroider um, Twin Peaks, just the mountains, the two mountains on it as well. So there you go. Hopefully it'll fit. I think it will. If anything, it'll fit him the first couple weeks, but it, I feel like it'll fit. I just, it's been a while, you know, I have a five and six year old. You just kind of forget how little they are at first. I think it'll be fine. My concern is really is, uh, these little legs. I think baby leg is a little longer than that. so soft and squishy and I'm really got God I'm really glad I got to use this yarn finally I just it's just beautiful really great stitch definition and then I knit a pair of little baby socks yay <laughs> I am knitting my brother-in-law a matching pair um this yarn is um miss babs in the batshit crazy colorway oh you know what i did not write down the base because it's not like a normal fingering i think it, it had a it is a bfl base northumbria i don't remember and I really wish that all socks took a day like these did. Which brings me to my works in progress. I will show you Steven's socks. That's my brother-in-law, sorry. So I have called these the Ghost Wood socks. So if you watch Twin Peaks, you know what I'm talking about. I really wanted to get these done before I podcasted today. I am so close, you guys. I have, I don't know, maybe 10 more rows. Um, I don't know how big his foot is, but I have a, a cardboard cutout of his foot, but it's that long. I don't have any even measured. I'm doing two at a time. And I decided to do uh, Mina Phillips two at a time. Because I wanted to try out her German short row heel. Now, maybe I would like it if I gave it another go. However, it, I just have these big gaps. Um, right here. And I don't even get that at all with the fish lips kiss heel. I have big humongo gaps. Um, I don't know why I knitted well with the other one. I don't, but I changed uh, a way I did it. Um, except for I have a big gap right here. Sorry about that. Here is on this side. Another big gap. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go back and weave all those closed. So really I just used my plain vanilla sock recipe, my Turkish cast on, and someone asked me why I chose that and it just gives me a very flush toe like I you can't even tell where it begins where with that um, figure eight one I always had issues with um, my stitches spreading apart and then um, I increased to 64 stitches knit to you know the two inches before the heel so yeah um so needless to say, I might try to give that heel another go to, and then kind of just tweak it a little bit. But for me, it's just, it, it didn't work out for me. So, which is, you know, whatever. Everybody has their own thing. Um, 
And then the Progress Keepers I'm using is this little uh, popsicle from the Gnome Knitter. And then a Snitch Progress Keeper that was gifted to me from, um, I forget who it was. <laughs> uh, but I did a swap in the O Loops Harry Potter knit along last year. And that's what was in my package. Which I'm really getting excited. But yeah, I'm almost done with those. I really like doing this two at a time. I've done it before and um, now I'm really into it again. So we'll see if I keep wanting to do it. But, you know, once you're done, you're done. I don't have to knit another sock. Yay. And um, I think I'm going to have about 8 to 10 grams each left of um, yarn left. So I tried to knit all of the yarn, however, I did want to keep a little bit to put into my crochet blanket. Oh, and this, oh, you know what, here's the tag for that yarn. So let's see what, Northumbria fingering, pore ply fingering, 100% blue face luster wool. So I will need to let him know that this is hand wash only, oh my gosh. <laughs> See, I, sometimes I forget that if it was me, I would hand wash myself anyway. But when I gift things, they tend to put, like to put things in the washer. So I will have to let them know um, that this is hand wash only. Which I still think they still have some little wash that I've given them. And I went back to my 1.5, um, 2.5 millimeter needles. I just, I like working with this size, even though I think, I think it's fine. I mean, it's not too gappy. There we go. But this is really pretty. And I've had this in my stash forever. And I think he'll really like them. Anyway, so the, this, um, project is housed in a new project bag of mine that I purchased from my friend Lee and her shop she um, has a new shop it's called Wild Handmade and it's on Etsy so if you go to wildhandmadeshop.etsy.com that'll take you there and I'll put everything in the show notes and here is the back of her cart if you want to look her up We've been friends for a long, long, long time on the interwebs. She's from France and she also has a podcast called All You Knit Is Love. And I wanted to get this feather bag and I really love it. And there's a little moon. And here's the inside fabric. So there's that. So I've just been kind of working nonstop on those socks. I wanted to get those done. Definitely want to get those done before I go up to the lake. Okay, because the two projects that I want to take up with me are, do I show them to you now? Okay, I'll just show the two that I want to take up to the lake with me first is housed right first is housed in this bag which is by the fat squirrel and it has a niffler on it sorry for the background noise which is the Lena tank top by Clinton or it's Clinton Co and it's designed by Elizabeth Doherty which I'm using the Quince & Co Linen and the Sparrow base, which or Sparrow weight, I guess, which is like a sport weight, I think. I don't know. But this colorway is Pigeon, I think. Yeah, Pigeon. Sorry, my nose is starting to run. I really love these tags. I think I might have said that last time. 
There it is. It's like a slate gray color, but it really comes up as a blue on the screen, but it's really dark, dark slate gray. So this top's taking a long time to make because the top portion is knit on twos, US twos, and I am now finally at the, um, where I've increased the needle, I think to a three, is that a three? To US three, which is a um, 3.25 millimeter. So when I showed this to you last, I was only at the very back, and that's as far as I got was here. So I knit the whole back panel, the whole front panel, and now, oh, that is really blowing out, isn't it? Oh well. And now I've connected them, which I think still, I'm gonna seam up the ends here, or the sides, I guess. And now I'm just going round and round and round for the body. Yay! So, I'm gonna take this one with me, just easy porch knitting, I guess. So, yeah, it's coming along. It's really fun. Um, this pattern is very beginner um, linen knitting project. Um, I mean, you're just really, like the top is garter stitch and now we're knitting in the round. And so far, so good. I'll be really happy to get it done and wear it though. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get all these projects completed by the end of this month. I think I'll be good as long as I don't cast anything on except for, <laughs> I cast, I just casted something else on last night. However, there's re a reason behind it. Um, last September, I guess, when I went to a wool gathering up in Yellow Springs, Ohio. Oh, if anyone's new, I'm from Southwest Ohio. That's where I live with uh, my husband, Oak, and my two kids, Oakland and Owen, aged five and six. Okay. Um, well, okay, where was I? <laughs> last year in September, I went to a wool gathering and Destination Yarn was there. And I had to purchase this yarn because we go up to Lake Erie every year. And we're, oh, there they are. There's the, one of the tags. And it's so cute because it's a postcard. <laughs> and here's her label. Hand dyed yarn inspired by travel. And she's the indie dyer. I want to say she lives close to Cleveland, Ohio. But I don't remember. But this is a le her letter, letter plus base, which is the fingering weight, 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon, 400 yards. And I'm going to have to say, um, sock yarn for me. I really like them plump. So 400 yards or less is my ideal anymore. Anything thinner than that is more like a lace weight almost to me and knitting socks with that thin yarn just doesn't work for me. So 400 yards or less is my ideal. I like the nice plumpy socks. Um, but this is the Lake Erie colorway and I wanted to cast this on. Initially I was going to make socks, however, I just found this, um, oh, what is it called? Let's see if this one, Summer Burst in June. I forgot to write down the designer. However, <laughs> I will um, put it here, and I'm hoping to be able to post a photo of what it looks like. But yeah, I really like it. So you have these dark blues and tealy blues, grays, tans, browns, my colors. 
And then um, what this that shawl looks like is you have a solid and then this is the second or contrast color with some stripes and then there's like a brioche section and then a, um, I forget what she calls it some sort of open color work thing at the end and this yarn's been in my stash forever I got it through the Isolde Teague um, shawl club and this is a sport weight it's like go oh, let me see the tag I don't even know if you can buy this. It's Blacker Blend Soya Bronze. I think this might have been just made for the club. And this is 150 grams, 620 yards. It called for two skeins of a sport weight, even though I really think you can just get away with one. However, you know, I have this. So I thought this would work perfectly because I really like to get it out of my stash plus I've, I've been wanting to knit with it for a while it's really rustic feeling I mean but it's soft it's hard to describe but it's 33% alpaca 67% wool and I mean it's like it's kind of sticky on itself but it, it's soft because of the alpaca but it feels rustic or it looks rustic, I guess. But I really like it. And this color is just so me. And with this pattern, I initially started with the six. Like it, what it called for. And um, I thought that was a little too tight. See right here. So in this panel, I went to a seven. So. So that's what I've gotten so far. I just wanted to get it on the needles before I take it up to the lake. So I'm going to call this my Lake Erie shawl. Yay! And too bad I couldn't wait for um, Brooklyn Net Folks BK Hipster Cow which starts in August to cast this on. But there's, I think, I'm gonna talk about it later, but there's three patterns I think I'm gonna knit for that knit along. I'll talk about it here in a little bit, but I'm really excited about this shawl. I think it'll be nice and warm. I mean, it's a sport weight. However, because of the alpaca, I think this is going to really take me into the fall season. So, yay. And that's housed in my French Supply Company bag. And um, I got a new pen for my bag. Which is the fish in the percolator. Which is the Twin Peaks thing. And this is who I purchased it from. The Silver Spider Print Shop which you can find on Etsy. Um, the other two, if you're curious, is this is just a Radiohead pen I've had. I think this is from Kid A, the Kid A album or Amnesiac. I don't remember. It's been a while. And this is Little Flower. This is from The Gap. I want to say maybe 20 years ago or something crazy like that that I've just had, you know, had laying around. So, yeah, there's the, that project that I can't wait to work on up there. It'll be fun <laughs> working on Lake Erie yarn at Lake Erie. Okay. And then my other works in progress are that I'm not taking with me to the lake because I would like to get the linen top done. However, I might just work on that shawl the most up there because if I just if I really work on it, I might get it done this that the week that I'm there, and then when I come home, I can focus on these three tops that are still it works in progress. Um, the next one I'll go ahead and show you is um, oh I'm sorry one more thing about this linen tank. I am participating in the linen cowl cowl linen cowl 
I'll put the hashtag down here, um, which is hosted by Hannah on the Road. She has a podcast called Hannah on the Road, I think, and also a Ravelry group, The Linen Cow, if you want to participate. I think it ends in the end of August, so you have plenty of time. And then the Bronte Along is also um, another knit along I'm doing. Is the Bronte Along hosted by Sarah from Love Suck Wool. She also has a podcast. And the yarn I'm knitting with is called Independent Will, and it's by Leading Men Fiber Arts. There's their tag. And this is on their spotlight base, which is 400 yards. It's a fingering weight, 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon. I love this yarn. It's so squishy. Mm, I just love it so much. But I'm trying really hard again to get those socks done. So I haven't really worked on this very much, but I think where you saw it last, maybe, was where this bird was. Maybe, I don't know. It's on such little needles. I think I'm, I think ne if I remember next time, I might put it on a bigger needle or cord so you can see it. But I've already separated for the sleeves. And um, now it's just knit, 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 knit. <laughs> I've modified, oh, I'm sorry. This is um, the So Faded sweater by Andrea Mowry. I am not fading it. Um, it's just a solid, I'm just using the independent wheel. Um, alternating skeins, which I found, it's not that hard. I, um, I found a trick um, where when you, because before I just really hated alternating skeins, knitting in the round. But what you do is, you know, you just knit your two rows and then switch to the other yarn. But you hold that yarn in the front, not the back. And I'm telling you what, I mean, it kind of, you can feel a little, feels a little dense there, but you really can't tell a difference. So yeah. So now alternating skeins for me, it's not a big deal. And I alternated the pattern a little bit because I really like the way um, this kind of garter stitch raglan looks. I did it in my passing showers cardigan. And so I kind of just want to do that raglan on all my stuff. So. I'm just knit, 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 knitting, and what I think I'm going to do, and really, I I liked this pattern because um, in all the other, almost all the other fingering weight sweaters I saw on Ravelry, sorry, my nose, um, it was like a boat neck. Well, I wanted um, something closer to my neck, um, so... Um, We'll see if I need to do decreases through here when I pick up the stitches. I don't know yet. Um, but I'm only going to knit. I'm not going to make it long. I kind of want it to be not cropped. But um, like with my high, high top, not high top, high waisted jeans and skirts and things. I just kind of want it to be, you know, a little bit longer than that. I, so I might knit this and then maybe do a three inch rib just to kind of cinch it right there on, you know, the waist of my jeans or whatever. We'll see. It's a, you know, I'm going to play with it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, so far I really love how this yarn knits up. It's just amazingly gorgeous. And this is my first fingering weight pullover. And I think this would look really cute with um, a Peter Pan collar coming out of it. And this, since it's BFL, you can just, it just it feels so warm. And I think it'll be a really nice um, transitional sweater into fall. 
and um, because it's the Bronte along um, again I've chosen this progress keeper because Jane Eyre is one of my favorite novels she says a uh, quote uh, she quotes I am no bird so there's that and I've chose the um, is it yeah bags by uh, blah, 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 bags by awesome granny the book since you know the Bronte sisters were authors so yeah and that um, if I didn't say the Bronte along doesn't end until August 31st so um, you can knit I think pretty much anything that inspires you that's Bronte um, or use um, yarn that's inspired by the Bronte sisters but I think even if you just wanted to knit an extremely simple shawl, I think would work. But that's me, I don't know. I don't really know the rules. I haven't really. I feel like if you knit, knitted a simple shawl, like a garter stitch shawl, cause I feel like that's what something that Jane Eyre would wear. Anyway. And then finally, my other, my last work in progress is do, 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 the Im Imogen T, which I haven't worked on in a little while. I don't even know if I even had this cast on the last time we spoke. Um, because you know, I've just been wanting to get those socks done, get them off the needles. I am knitting this. Well, I'm going to show you. Well, initially, this okay, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, this was something else and I ripped it out and this is Madeline Tosh Twist Light, I want to say, in the Mill Pond colorway. And it is just this beautiful green and this is my first Madeline Tosh project and this yarn is seriously soft and cottony, not cottony like a cloud that's what I mean it gets really soft and I'm really loving it you know what and I think I've done it again back to what I, what am I calling this the independent well pullover let me tell you what needles I'm using I think I've told you with all my other projects. I always forget about this part. I'm using my US fives on this, um, my high higher sharps. And so it's kind of airy, but not too airy. And I really like it. So, all right. So on the image NT, I'm using size fives as well. And you can tell how the difference I think almost between a BFL and this wool superwash wool base. Um, so right now I use you do a couple rows of the border and now I'm just you, you do go right into the lace panel and then you just knit around 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 the rest of the body and just this lace panel. So it's a simple um you know, you got a little bit of interest. Yeah, you know, there's just a lot of sock and net stitch. So it's a pretty fun pattern, I think, so far. I like to get this done. I like to get all of these done by the end of the month. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it is all fingering weight. Pretty much. I think it's wishful thinking. However, how I want this, well, this is um, yarn from where I work, so I can work on this while I'm at work, but I'd really like to get that linen top done, because I'd really like to wear it when it's really hot. This, I feel like, again, could transition into fall because it's real wool, and um, it'll keep me a little bit warmer than the linen, so... And I think what I want to do is just try to work on one at a time just to get them done. I don't know. So yeah. I think that's 
all my works in progress. I think. And I've talked about the two knit alongs I'm going to, that I'm in right now. Oh, and I didn't show you the bag. This bag that's housed, housing the Imogen tea is by three bags full. And I purchased this when I was in Rhinebeck last October. Um, there's a new knit along that's going to be happening the beginning of August, August 1st, hosted by Jacqueline from the Brooklyn Knit Folk, and it's called the BK Hipster Cow. And with this cow, the pattern has to have 30 projects or less. So, you know, like a new designer, maybe not a, a very well-known designer. And um, I have tons of uh, patterns and my favorites that were not many projects. So I'm just all over this knit along. Um, I even created a bundle. So if you want to join the knit along and you need some inspiration, I have created a bundle just in my favorites. Um, Michelle Owls on Ravelry, if you, you're interested. And there are, there are, there is three patterns I, I'm wanting to cast on for that. So I'm hoping maybe one pattern per month since it's a three month knit along. So it starts on August 1st. And there you go, see, oh, do, do, do. okay. The um, first one, and I'm, gonna, I'm really hoping but I can figure out how to put the photos of the projects on the screen here. If not, I'm sorry. I'll try to show you the next time if I can't show it to you today. Is the Dimbala by Laura Chow. It's a three quarter sleeve sweater, which I might try to make longer sleeved. And it's like a Henley, it's really form fitted. It's kind of like a cropped where it ends um, kind of like where your the high-waisted pants or skirt is um, but it has like the this um, I want to say it's probably with pearl stitches like a, um, a diamond shape crisscross going all the way through the body and with that one I think I went there's this tomato red yarn at where I work and this is a worsted weight sweater, I don't remember if I said that, that I want to use, that I envision me wearing, that I, I love that color. So that's the color I want to use for that sweater. And then there's, um, I think her, na her name on Instagram is um, This Handmade Life. Her name's Olivia. Vila Real, Olivia, I'm sorry, I butchered your last name, but she's, she's designed, I want to say, this collection of socks that's based on, like, Miss Marple Mysteries, a lot of them, like, Murder at the Vicarage, I think, was one of the sock names, and the one I want to do is called Sixpence. And that will be a pair of socks that I'm going to knit for a friend for Christmas. And then the next one is called Cinnamon Stars. And that is by Amy Von Delaire. Actually, this is four things. Um, Rachel, the indie dyer behind six and seven fiber was posting about this designer on her feed on Instagram. So I went over there and looked at some of her patterns and she had a few cows that I really liked. So I purchased them. Um, but this one it's, um, it's knit in the round. I think it's fingering weight. However, it's two colors where you're there's like stars in between 
it's hard to describe. Hopefully there's a photo. Um, so I want to knit that. And then there's this color work sweater pullover that um, I think I'm going to try to make for my sister instead of that one cardigan that I've just been having issues with. Um, so I'm hoping that this pullover will be more understandable for me than the other one. And I think that might be it for that. However, I have some things to show you because I couldn't stop my trigger finger from buying things. As you know, um, six and seven fiber, uh, gave us a coupon code called podcast love last episode for 10% off in her shop, which is still good until July 31st. So I went into her shop and purchased a couple things like you do. <laughs> and in my package, she sent me some teas in this cute little paper pouch. Um, an English breakfast tea, which you know what? I don't even think I've tried Tazo's English breakfast tea. A honey lemon throat comfort, which I'm just going to save for cold season because I think that would be lovely. And then she sent me some lovely uh, sample of soak. So thanks Rachel for that. And I purchased this mini skein set. Um, it's called Auntie Kate. And this is on her Milo base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Uh, each skein is 87 yards, 20, 20 grams. And I think I'm just going to half this all up and make socks with it. I might just magic ball them up. I don't know. I think if the magic knots were on the sides of my foot, I don't think I'd care, but I, I think I might just not do that. So, excuse me. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think I just wanna make socks, but it's so beautiful. And I'm gonna hold off on it for a while because I still kind of think maybe I'll put it into a shawl of some sort. I don't know. It's extremely soft. I love every one of these colors. This is beautiful. And then I also got, um, this is called Knocking at the Door. Basis Sunflower, which is 100% Merino Worsted, 220 yards. This is her non superwash worsted weight and I just really love love that love this colorway it has some pretty beautiful colors in it and I'm either going to do a cowl or a hat I just don't know what yet and yeah but it's really soft I really love her aesthetic but this is six and seven fiber and she's on Etsy and if you go before the 31st, you can use the podcast love and get a discount. Okay. And I forgot to show this to you guys last time, but this is that Fred and the um, Nomadic Yarns, Fred and George on her Twisty Sport, which is 328 yards. And this is 80% Superwash Merino and 20% Nylon. And it's a self striping, but you know, I just knowing that she makes those balls by hand, I just say, just put it, keep it in a skein. You don't need to ball it up for me. <laughs> so yeah, I love the, I love this. Can't wait to cast that on. And then I was part of the yarn a tea club and this came in the mail and this, um, I think this was her last yarn a tea club. And um, this is by, I'm sorry, this is by Third Vault Yarns. 
And this is on her Vortex sock, which is 80% Superwash Blue Face Luster, 20% Nylon. It's a fingering weight. And the colorway is called, the name's Finn, and I'm in charge. So this was based on Finn. This was the, her Star Wars um, collaboration, I guess. So this is all based on Finn's jacket. So there's some little red specks in there. Some like little, I want to say green. I don't know. I can't really tell. And it came with a sock pattern and it came with this awesome tee called Mr. Big Deal. <laughs> and it's in this cute little test tube type thing. And I really can't wait to try it. But I've had it sitting back in my craft room all this time just so I could show it to you guys. And I almost wanted to show you the sock pattern. However, I just didn't know. I mean, I guess this is, I mean, she's based off in the UK. So I'm sure I'm one of the last people to receive it. And it's been, I've had it for a while. Oh, well. But it comes with a sock pattern. And it's based on Finn's jacket. And it's just really, really cute. I think the last one was, um, the yarn of tea was Ray and... I wanted to make sure I got the next one, so I, I ordered it. And then, lastly, I got, um, and I've had, I have another one of her bags. This is by um, Emerald Fibers. She is in based in Ireland. She does, makes these beautiful bags, and she does these, um, like, stamps on there. Screen print, screen prints, that's what I'm looking for. And I kept looking at this one. I'm like, I love that one. It has a sock on it. <laughs> and so I waited and waited. Nobody was buying it. I'm like, okay, I think it's because it's supposed to be mine. <laughs> and then she went on vacation and I'm like, oh no. But it was still there when she came back. So it was mine. And this is the inside fabric. I really love her bags. And this is her information. So yeah. I think that's everything. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a couple other items to show you that I purchased. Um, but now I am not going to buy any more yarn besides the yarn that I'm going to make that um Dimbala I probably just said that wrong nope Dimbala sweater that that tomato red all right so um next week we will be going up to Lake Erie I'm really excited about just getting in that lake taking lots of walks and riding bikes and hanging out outside uh, especially that lake effect I'm really hoping um Usually when I'm up there, my seasonal allergies are non-existent. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm really sick of my eyes hurting and my nasal cavity hurting. So um, I hope you guys have a great two weeks and I'll talk to you soon.